Well, hello again. Welcome to The Way I Do It. My name is Chris, if you haven't been here before. Today I'm working on my Dixie Chopper. It's a 2012 model. It's called the 2760 HP. This is the premium Dixie Chopper available at the time. It had a 60-inch cut and a 27-horsepower Generac engine. So the issue at hand today was my wife was mowing with it, and it suddenly died. So I went to where she was and uh, took a look at it. And the first thing I went to is the fuse. So this actually has a main fuse on the left side right here. This is the uh, main engine harness plug right here. And this cover comes off to show the fuse now it was a 30 amp that was in there I'm not sure what's supposed to be in there but it's a 30 amp and that is your main fuse to provide power because the power goes to the starter from the battery and then it taps off of that post to provide power so I found that fuse was blown and we then uh, were able to start it uh, however, we uh, could not run the mower deck. So I got it back here, and I do have a wiring diagram. I have the Dixie Chopper 2012 manual, and I have the wiring diagram. Unfortunately, this does not contain the engine harness, which I guess is a Generac thing. But... Uh, and it does not label like these relays. So the re relays are under the key switch. It does not label what these relays are for. So they're, they're, they're like a, a safety, I guess. So anyhow, in looking at this, I figured out that the blade switch, which is your standard blade switch, <coughs> easy for me to say no it's not your standard it's actually a little different because the youtubers say they've never seen one with the spread terminals and in the case of generac they only use the three terminals out here and then the outside terminals so these terminals on this switch um, this is where your power goes in and it's normally closed, which means it's normally providing power to the outside terminals. So this one is connected with that, always, and this one's connected with that. So then when you lift the switch, you provide power to this uh, center terminal. So that is when the, when the uh, mower comes on. So I checked continuity on that, and my um, I had no continuity. So my switch was bad, and uh, so I disassembled the switch. I disassembled the switch. I cut a hole in the side. You can see it right there. And I was able to get continuity in the places that belonged. Okay, checking it with my ohm meter. Um, what had happened is it uh, apparently had a uh, too much voltage going through it. So I took a little better look, and I found down here that although it says on the diagram, I think pink and blue, it looks like black and white. But down here is where the uh, plug is for your switch on your mower. And if you can see where it goes through, goes through the body, right there, all it has is that cloth sheath around it. And you can see in the back, that helps right there, no. you can see the choke cable runs right by it. There's not a lot of flexibility. I don't know if Generac put that in that location or if uh, this thing has been touched by somebody that had no business touching uh, stuff. So anyhow, that choke cable was pushing that 
wire and on top of it the um, the wire was routed under this bar so it came out on this side of the bar which caused that uh, sheath to rub through and short out the wires so I had a dead short of the positive wire to the mower switch which in turn in turn ruined that switch um, as far as the other wires on here they basically go to your safeties um, it's all a complicated system to provide safety that includes your seat switch which is right there on mine it includes the switch on the brake which is right there so if I lift the parking brake you can see there's actually uh, two switches that go to the parking brake and there are also switches on your hand control so there's one for the left and way under there is one for the right and what those all do is they all tie together to either allow you or not allow you to start it and also they are involved in killing the engine if you exit the uh, um, exit the mower and of course these are all safeties so you either don't run yourself over or a passenger which you should have no passengers but another person that may be near the mower if you happen to exit it and it rolls away you can't get off the mower so yeah um i know there's a lot of videos especially on the cheap cup cadets and how to defeat these things but it's best to have them in place and have them working the only thing that um that I'm okay with is uh, having it uh, maintain the mower engagement when backing up. And this does not have a reverse uh, disengagement. The, uh, the consumer home model Cub Cadet has a system where it shuts the mower off when you go in reverse. This is a more commercial unit, does not do that. So, in summary, if you're having trouble with this switch, uh, there's people that show you how to check them, but um, you know, the normally closed on them means that the outside terminals are normally closed, which means they're always closed, whether it's on or off. And when you pull the switch up, it either, um, it'll engage the center terminal with, with continuity. So I hope that helps somebody. If you have any other questions, uh, I'm learning about this thing every day, uh, putting it back to the way it was when it was purchased really uh, really does a trick I mean the somebody had it for example they eliminated uh, this has a left and right tank and if you're on a slight hill and you have two full tanks obviously the fuel would flow from one tank to the other if there was no uh, no valve so I had to replace the left and right tank valve there's a few other things that they eliminated and uh, yeah sometimes people have no business uh, touching power equipment but uh, yeah any questions comment below please like the video and give me a subscription so I can increase my base thanks for watching that's the way I do it